In today's video, I'm covering Shaolin 50K's September 2021 Commodore 64 Coding Challenge. Shaolin is now hosting monthly coding challenges on his Twitch channel, including Mega 65 Game Creation Challenges, which have resulted in some amazing new content for the upcoming console. This is the third challenge I have participated in. The aim of the September challenge was to write an efficient function to correctly display the following image using whichever technique you can imagine, but do it in the shortest amount of code as possible. Take a few moments to think about the image to figure out what formula you're staring at. Quick coding tip. The blue background does not have to be spaces. Trailing this video, there are a couple of bonus segments should you decide to stick around that long. With that, let's jump right into the code. There were a total of 24 entries, nine of which were written in Commodore 64 Basic. We'll cover those first. Clocking in at 225 bytes is Tron's entry, and this is how it runs. And take a look at his program. So you can see this is Tron's basic program, and it looks like it uses data statements here to read in data, and it's not pr programmatically generating the function. Next up is SP175 basic entry and it is 145 bytes and we'll take a look at his program you can see it's much slower than uh, than Tron's entry pretty cool though and you can see it's a lot shorter than Tron's entry because it's doing the math here it's instead of using a table next up let's take a look at Gihaf Gihaf's entry is 109 bytes and it's just on the execution speed it looks very similar to the last one SP-175 there we go let's take a look at the program and even this one's even shorter uh, I think it's I think it's pretty neat nice and succinct getting better and better next up is Air Jury and this one is 105 bytes. And it looks like it's running similar speed. Let's take a look at Air Jury's program. And there it is. They're kind of hard to decipher just looking at them. You have to really dig into them to, to really figure them out. So I won't spend too much time on that. On that. Next up is Akmafen, which is the same exact byte size. 105 bytes. It looks, you can see what it's doing. It looks similar to the last one. We'll see, we'll see if the program looks, code looks similar. Yep, but it does look similar. And, oh, and you can see here it's clear in the screen. The top entries that I've seen don't really clear the screen. They just stop on the they just start on the top left corner and draw all the characters. All right. Next up is Microman's basic entry. And his seems a little bit slower than the other ones, but we'll we'll take a look at it. And his clocks in at 101 bytes. There we go. Control two. And look at that. It's two lines of code. Very cool. Next up is ZZ. And, you know, even though uh, some of these programs are slow, the goal of this challenge was not speed. It was just to generate the image in as short a code as pro possible, and it could be as inefficient as is needed. But yeah, the CZs, ZZs is really sl slow. 
But basic on the Commodore 64 is slow in general. Even though it doesn't look like it's doing anything, it's drawing blue characters on the background in that bottom space until it hits the bottom, the very bottom row. There it is. And there's his program. And that's interesting, he starts it at uh, 38911. And then one of the tricks that he used to save bytes or save a byte was to do four to the fifth plus I here. So you raise the number, instead of putting like 1024, he put four to the power five, which was something that they discussed on Shallow on Stream as a byte saver, a byte saver, which was interesting. So this one clocked in at 93 bytes, which is quite impressive for a basic program. Now next up is Gears, Gear S, and his basic program is 89 bytes. So that's the top basic program on here. It's the final one. And is it me or are they all getting slower? <laughs> the, uh, the more, the fewer bytes, the slower it is. I'm gonna warp it. Now, wow, that one is pretty succinct and short. So anyway, those are the basic entries. And uh, it was interesting if you, uh, to know that a couple of the people that turned in their basic entries were actually smaller than their assembly language counterparts. But we're, we're now gonna jump into the assembly language uh, participants. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have Air Jury's assembly language source but his clocked in at 107 bytes, whereas his basic program was 105 bytes. Of course, his program executes almost instant, instantaneously when it runs, but it's a little bigger. I'm not gonna disassemble it. Next up after Air Jury is Microman's source code. And here it is. Um, I'm, not gonna be able to do, I'm not gonna be able to dive into the exact particulars of how they're doing what they're doing. This is his assembler and, and then I will put the code on my GitHub. I'll throw it all up on my GitHub um, at the conclusion of this video here. So you can download it all and check it out. Everyone's uh, way of thinking, their, their interesting way of handling the same problems that we're all looking into. Next up is Acmafen. His is also 105 bytes basically the same length as Microman. It looks a little more cleaned up though in the source code, just it looks a little cleaner. And it's using a table, if you notice here at the bottom. And then next up, the first one that is sub 100 bytes is Gareth with 79 bytes. And he has a nice little a wall of text up there at the top and you can see his program it's really short and succinct and uses a few tables for 79 bytes next up is Tron's entry at 77 bytes and now uh, Tron's is interesting because his uh, basic program that he did was 225 <laughs> So that this is a huge improvement over that at coming in at 77 bytes. Uh, very, very nice, very nicely done. Next up is Enduron at 69 bytes. And this isn't this isn't kick assembler. I'm not sure was uh, I'm not sure which lang uh, which assembler this is, but For being 69 bytes, it, it seems it seems like a lot of program program code. And that's in Durons. Very nice, very nice. And then uh, next up, now we're starting to hit the top 10, the top 10 entries. And rounding out the top 10 is yours truly. So uh, I'll show you my entry. It's 
it uses a couple of tables here, but one for the color and one for the number of uh, bytes. And it just loops through the tables and displays the characters. It's nothing fancy, but uh, I didn't use any illegal opcodes or anything like that. It, it's pretty short, uh, succinct, but definitely not the shortest as there are at least nine others that are much better. And that clocked in at 68 bytes. On my entry, I decided I was just going to write my program. I spent a few hours on it, and that was it. I said, I'm not try trying to necessarily win or anything like that. I'm not trying to um, just overly optimize and spend weeks on it. <laughs> I just wanted to get it done, get it submitted. As soon as I was done, to, as soon as I was done with this little uh, program loop, I said, I can't improve upon this. I'm submitting my entry, <laughs> and I turned it in. Next up was Old School Coders, and let's bring that one up. His entry uses similar ideas with the bytes and loop and structure, and he just managed to squeeze out a few more bytes than I was than I did. So OSK did a nice entry, nicely done at 65 bytes. Next up is at 64 bytes, Greg Twee. I don't know which one of these is his. I don't see him. Maybe I don't have his. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to show his, uh, unfortunately. And then after the 64 bytes, the next closest was Gihoff with 56 bytes. Very nice. I love that. It's There's something to be learned from this, this code. Nicely done at 56 bytes. Next up is Skunk Monkey. And oh, I have like three versions, so I don't know. I'm gonna assume it's this version three. There's like a skunk monkey. That one says 59 bytes. Okay, so his entry was 53. Okay, yeah, okay. So 53 bytes by skunk monkey. And here it is. It's funny how some of these the are fewer bytes. <laughs> it looks longer in their source code. Very nicely done at 53 bytes. Next up is Carl Hendrick, and his clocked in at 48 bytes. I'm assuming this is one, this is his, because it says C-H, Carl Hendrick. And I didn't add up the bytes, but I'll take his word, their word for it. It's 48 bytes, very nicely done. Next up is Skazlin. I don't have Skazlin source code because it wasn't included on the Velissa source, at least not under that name. So I don't see it here in the left. Skazlin's was 45 bytes. His wasn't the shortest, but he was the only one that hadn't already been awarded the Nexus board, which is a Mega 65 FPGA board. So he was actually winner of the prize this time. And I don't have his source code, but I do have someone's uh, Jesper Grabgard, who's also is 45 bytes, and their source is right here. And highly commented, very well done. And they tied with him at 45 bytes. Next up is ZZ. Do I have that? And ZZ. There's the meat of the whole program right there. And this one was 44 bytes. So this is the main chunk of code right there, 44 bytes. And then the final entry was gear S at also 44 bytes. So they just got smaller and smaller. And the ones that had the top and the shortest were actually using kernel routines in basic and they were using the algorithm to generate the Fibonacci sequence. Now, there was one bonus entry. Sub after everyone submitted their entries, between Gear S and Skazlin, they both kind of worked together to generate this 39 byte version, which takes the tips and tricks from uh, that everyone learned together. Looking at other people's code, you go, oh, if you do that, oh, okay, you can save bytes doing it this way. And they came up with this really nice short entry. And I, I think it could be even shorter, but uh, not, not by me. So anyway, that is the September challenge 
from Shallon 50k over on Twitch. It was very, very fun to participate in the challenge and challenge ourselves to program this thing in as few bytes as possible, and I enjoy doing it. On uh, the October challenge, I think he's doing a Sid, a musical type of a challenge. In November, December, I forget, he's doing a Mega 65 challenge. I think the December for the for the year end, it's going to be the December challenge to write a game for the Mega 65. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. So initially, my idea was to just say, okay, what we'll do is just have a table. So it'd be the character, the color, and the number of times you draw the character. So white once, space once, red two, space, however many that is. And then just kind of do put that in a table. All those values, just put them all in a table. That was how I started. I didn't even have this in the zero page. I just put it up at 1000 and I just looped through this table one byte at a time. And then it was midway in when I realized, hey, we don't need to have a table of characters and this reduces the program um, by 16 bytes because there's 16 of these uh, values. You can make every other character blue, the same background color, and then just keep the same character. And that was an epiphany that I had, that I had later on in the development. And then it went from there to where I started trying to get it into the zero page. And the reason why you want to put it in zero page is that it uses fewer bytes for, for everything, as variables and everything. And then that eventually led to my entry, my final entry, where I got it to 68 bytes. And that was good enough. I was like, if this isn't short enough, that's fine. I, you know, Wherever I land on the leaderboard, I'm fine with. That was how I derived the logic for my entry for this. Made it this far in the video and you're still not satisfied with the explanations presented? Well, head on over to Carl Henrik's blog where he does an in-depth analysis of several of the source code files presented in this video. He goes into a great deal of information on his own project as well as covering several of the other submissions that were posted on this September update.